Hola, welcome to this week's video, which is all about anxiety, how it develops, how it helps us, how it can begin to work against us, how it helps create hypervigilance, overthinking, and how we can manage this and bring this down to a more normal level where we are managing our worlds as we walk through them without spinning off into panic attacks, anxiety, and as I said, overthinking and hypervigilance. So the first thing to understand is anxiety is a protective mechanism, a coping strategy, it's quite archaic, it's quite primal within us. It's centered around looking for dangers from the environment. So it requires us to be kind of uh, vigilant, to spot for threats, to look out for cues, signs, people's emotions, facial expressions. If you go back into kind of pay, um, you know, stone age times or whatever, then it's looking for dangers within the environment, spotting colors, spotting movement, all of this stuff. So this is the system that helps preserve us, that helps keeps us alive. In modern day times, it manifests itself more in uh, uh, as a child in terms of survival. How am I gonna survive the immediate environment around me? Which for a lot of children is fine and the immediate environment doesn't give too much of a potential threat, certainly not a threat to the very self. For unfortunately for a lot of children, their immediate environment is not so healthy, their home environment is not so great, and they be, need to become vigilant, looking for cues from parents, from siblings perhaps, looking for threats, gauging the way energy's moving, emotions are moving, um, what's coming next, how do I navigate my through, self through this next situation in order to survive and self-preserve. And for those children who are abused, this becomes even more of a, an important coping mechanism. If it's emotional abuse, mental abuse, it's exactly the same. It's like, how am I, it's like walking on eggshells. What do I have to do in order to not trigger my persecutor, not trigger any threat from the environment? What can also happen to us as adults is, let's say for instance, we had fine childhood, everything was pretty good, but we as adults get ourselves somehow find ourselves into a not so nice uh, situation. Maybe it's a relationship. Uh, maybe there's lots of manipulation control. Maybe we find ourselves in a negative working environment. And gradually with the stress and what's going on and threats coming our way and attacks on the self, we begin to develop anxiety through the stress. Cortisol is running through our body. And our brains are wonderful things where they, there's a bit of a flaw in the system, I guess. All the happy kind of hormones, the dopamine, serotonin, things like that, they are in limited supply. Once they run out, the brain has to, the body has to remake them. Cortisol, however, once the process starts to uh, begin of making the cortisol and sending it out through the body, the body continues to produce cortisol. Cortisol can, as a side note, also travel across the placenta. So if mother's stressed during pregnancy, child is born stressed because it has cortisol running through its body and now its body is too producing cortisol. So you have a very stressed uh, baby which um, you're gonna struggle to soothe because it's running on stress hormones, running on anxiety. Chances are it's born into an environment where one of the caregivers is on edge, perhaps, let's say they're in an abusive relationship or something, so the environment's not safe. I don't know why the environment's not safe, but the environment's not safe, so anxiety is gonna help me. So anxiety is kind of protector and savior of the soul in many ways, and of the self, of the us as a unit, as an entity. Um, where this starts to spin out of control is, our nervous system gets stuck in this survival mode. So we're, now we're surviving. Now we're constantly running on cortisol. We're constantly running effectively on stress. We begin to overthink. We begin to angle every situation, like Carlito Briganti and Carlito's way. You know, we're, I'm angling, I'm angling. I, I need to know every event I'm living in the future. Is this a dangerous situation? How do I play it? How do I get through it? And we begin to apply it to an awful lot of things within our life. So we are constantly on hypervigilance, constantly on edge, getting tired, breathing shallowly, all these kind of things which roll along with it to the point where we're spiraling out of control and anxiety, our protective mechanism is now actually 
doing us harm. It's now actually working against us. Chances are situations repeat themselves, which compound it. The brain then justifies it, you know, the kind of cognitive side of us. Good job I was anxious there and hypervigilant and overthought everything because look what happened in the end, I survived it. So therefore this mechanism I have in place and I've developed, uh, this is the psyche talking to itself, obviously. Now this is justified, I need to keep this going. So how do you break past this? How do you break this vicious cycle? Um, it's quite difficult and just as you learnt it and then our psyche in its wonderful way, then begins to put it on automatic response, then increases it, turning it into possibly a neurosis or whatever, and now even into paranoia. So we need to stop it. We notice that this is draining us, it's tiring us, it's making us ill, we perceive attack from everywhere, whatever, we're always on edge, we're always on shaking, because cortisol and adrenaline is running through our body. How do we stop this? How do we slow this down? One of the first things you can do is to check out reality. Check yourself against reality. And I, I kind of encourage people to do this a lot. Am I perceiving reality correctly? Am I seeing it for what it is in a kind of objective way? Can I take a step back and see reality? Is it slightly different? Often we ask other people's opinions and that sometimes muddies the water. But just to take that step back, and kind of go, is this as threatening as I think? The other thing you can check in with yourself is how much control do I have of said situation to try to stop the overthinking? But we're kind of using the overthinking here a bit, a bit more consciously. How much control do I have? I have this much control. I have control over what I can do and how I react. I don't have control over where the other person or the environment is going to go with this situation. So, now I have this awareness, I can begin to calm myself down, and I'll get onto how you do that, but I can kind of accept I have this level of control, this level of input, I don't have control over that. I need to accept this and let things play out. The other thing you can start to tell yourself is, look at how much I have actually lived through, got through, survived, all the rest of it, and I'm still here. Once you begin to do this, reframe situations, just see how much power you have there and is the anxiety, the worry, the hypervigilance, the overthinking, is it all necessary? If it's not, slow it right down and make the conscious effort to do this. Another way to aid this is, uh, there's a couple of ways, there's breathing techniques and there's sensory stimuli. So let's go with breathing techniques first. Basic ones are to breathe in for the count of four, slowly through your nose, breathe out for the count of eight, through your mouth as if you're blowing air through a straw. When you breathe in, fill your stomach up, push it out like Buddha. When you breathe out, push your navel towards your spine, slow yourself down, because what's happening is the body is getting oxygenated, basically, and too much oxygen, too much of anything is not so great, but too much oxygen will rust things, we oxidize, oh, things oxidize. If there's too much oxygen within our system, within our blood stream, same thing happens, it oxidizes. So, you know, we get this kind of like, for want of a better metaphor, rusting with inside ourselves. Bring the CO2 levels up, slow yourself down. That's why people are given bags when they're hyperventilating, having a panic attack, to increase the CO2 levels, balance back out CO2 and oxygen, bring the body down to a, a more of a state of calm and relaxation. And these breathing techniques, you can move them on to doing them every day. You can move it on to meditation, into yoga, and any good yogi will tell you the key to yoga is the breathing keeping the breathing calm through putting the body under kind of some kind of stress. This gives, starts to give you control of your mind, of your psyche, of your body, of your nervous system, because your nervous system is running on this fight, flight, survival mode. And then your brain's overthinking. From the breathing techniques, you can move towards changing stimuli. So for instance, prevention's better than cure. You could take cold showers every day. And like I say, you can add in yoga, meditation, things like that. The cold showers every day, again, puts the body under some, under some kind of stress. It also distracts the mind. It's like, oh, oh, okay, uh, different stimuli. Uh, what do we do here? You breathe. You breathe yourself through it. Now, this doesn't work for everybody. Not everybody finds 
cold shower work or cold plunges, etc., effective? A lot of people do. If you don't find that effective for you, then try something else. Uh, Google some more techniques, look at YouTube. There's tons of stuff on there to give you different ways to calm your nervous system down, calm your mind down. F moving on from the cold showers, you can change stimuli. Literally take your shoes and socks off, put your feet into sand, stone, a different stimuli. Again, I would recommend doing this several times a week. Take a walk along the beach, take a walk uh, into nature, calm the system down, try to switch the mind off. If it wanders, bring it back. All of these things are you beginning to take control of the automatic responses within your system. You are now trying to take conscious control because if you don't, the body will keep running automatically because our brain is wonderful at doing things like that, which is great. But like I said, it can begin to work against us. In the immediate situation, if you feel that being, take your shoes off. Change the stimuli, put your hands in cold water, put your hands in stones, put, have something nearby, give your brain something like, whoa, okay, what's going on over here? Different stimuli, need to push through it, calm the situation down. If uh, I'm gonna, I've got another video, I'll put this one back up. There's, you can have the 15 minute rule and the three second rule and have some phrases with you handy if something is happening in the immediate moment. Let's say you get a not so nice email or you know it's gonna be a not so nice email or someone's giving you what, you know, and they're kind of coming in at you and you feel the need to react. You feel the need to, oh, I need to, you know, do something right here, right now. Take a step back, 15 minutes. Give yourself 15 minutes pause. Change stimuli, put your hands in cold water, wash your face, whatever you need to do, stones, go and look at nature something like that. There are other grounding techniques such as the 54321 technique where you it's like five things you can see, I can't remember what it is, four things you can touch, three things you can feel, two things you can hear, one thing you can taste. You know, it's bringing yourself back into that present moment. Uh, so as I said, uh, the 15 sec second rule, let's say, I don't know, it's a partner sending something or whatever, you know, you can take that step back 15 minutes. Okay, I'm not gonna react, <sighs> calm it down. You can also move, if it's more immediate and it's some kind of dialogue that's happening right then, right there, take the three second rule. Pause for three seconds, breathe. Maybe use a visualization of a big stop sign in front of you. Maybe use a visualization of you swirling a cloak of protection around you, an invisible cloak of protection, or some other kind of visualization which just kind of brings you down for a second. You can also arm yourself with some phrases here as well, such as, uh, could you repeat that? I didn't quite understand that. What did you mean by that? Could you please clarify what you just said? I need to think about this for a moment. Can you give me a second? All of this it slows the present situation down. You're like stretching time to create that space where you are bringing the stress levels down, bringing the thinking down, bringing the overthinking, sorry, bringing the hypervigilance down, you are training the system in a different way um, of responding to your world. And once you start doing that, I think the final thing which is really, really cool, which is what a lot of us do not do, is begin to tell, the, tell yourself, hey, you know, we got through that situation. Uh, so talk to yourself in a kind of way where you acknowledge your achievement. You know, we got through that, we were quite calm and we didn't need to be hypervigilant. We didn't need to overthink it. You need to continue to tell yourself this because you are what you think. You will convince yourself otherwise and therefore begin to, with all of these things combined, bring yourself out of this constant state of anxiety, this constant state of stress hypervigilance, overthinking, shaking, um, whatever else is going on for you. You will bring yourself out of this gradually and begin to realize and get your system to realize we don't need to be in this mode anymore. You know, there's another thing of like, if it comes from back then and there in childhood, well, hang on, I'm an adult now. I'm not in that childhood. I'm not in that environment. You know, if you're still in an abusive environment, it's much harder to do. It's still possible, but you kind of need to leave, which is a whole other battle in itself, um, appreciated. But you can begin to tell yourself, I'm not that weak, uh, powerless six-year-old against, you know, big adults anymore. I am a grown adult, I have children of my own, I have a family, I am very, very capable. Again, this is kind of out loud telling yourself, we no longer need to do this, I no longer need to do this. There are different ways to do it. And gradually the system will begin to change 
and relax and realize there is another way for your system to operate because your nervous system your brain, your psyche, they all operate together in some kind of homeostasis, but they also all operate independently, unconsciously, subconsciously, however you want to put it, automatically, as well as with conscious thought. So they all kind of like influence the other, which means you can influence your overall system and change it because you are taking a conscious awareness of what's going on and making conscious efforts to change it. I hope that helps. It's a bit of a slight overview. Um, it should give you some uh, great tips and advice. And until next time, please take very good care of yourselves. Adios.